and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here, and I'm doing another one of my Core One Basic Skills uh, revision videos. Um, if you would like to, you could try the six questions, um, pause the video, and then I will go through the work solutions afterwards. These are all topics that are in um, chapters one, two, and three so far of the um, Core One syllabus and the Core One book. So pause the video. I will go through in five seconds. Okay, let's have a go at question one. We are solving a quadratic inequality. The first thing we do is we would try to factorise this. Now, there are two options here. Either this factorises potentially with a 4x here and an x here, or it would factorise as a 2x in both brackets. They are the only two options. It works out, then uh, we look at the positive 3. To multiply to positive 3, we could either, it's either 3 and 1, uh, both negative signs or both positive. 3 and 1 will never give us 8 out of this, but it does in this case here, especially if we have a negative 3 here and a negative 1. Because that will give us 2x multiplied by 2x is 4x squared, 2x multiplied by negative 3 is negative 6x, negative 1 multiplied by 2x is the other negative 2 to give negative 8x, and negative 1 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 3. So it will be 2x subtract 1, 2x subtract 3. So we would factorise this as 2x subtract 1, 2x subtract 3 is less than 0. Now we have to be super careful with quadratic inequalities, we must, must, must sketch the graph in order to find the region. Now, if we were to solve this equals zero, we'd have half and three over two as roots. So we would have our roots here at a half, zero, and three over two, and zero. And uh, it would be a U-shaped graph, so it would look something like this. Now, we are looking for when the graph is less than zero, where the Y number is less than zero, so along here is where we will be looking. So therefore, our answer to this question is x is less than 3 over 2, so less than 3 over 2, and is bigger than a half. That's our answer. OK, question 2. We're given a quadratic graph, and we're asked to uh, sketch the graph and label all the points where the graph crosses the axes. So, step 1. First thing I suggest you do is find the y-intercept. So we would find the y-intercept. Now, how would you find the y-intercept? Well, that's when you set x equal to 0 in this formula here, and you would clearly get y is 6 when you do that, if you put 0 in here and here. So the y-intercept is at 0, 6. Right, let's find next the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, but they'll never call it this in the exam. They call them the roots. Now the x-intercept or the roots is when y is equal to 0. So you would solve this equation here with the y being 0. So you would solve 0 equals 5x squared, subtract 17x, add 6. That's a quadratic equation equal to 0. Let's try and factorise it first. And if we can't factorise, we'd use the formula. But in this case, we can factorise. It must be a 5x here, an x here. And if we... Uh, take a negative 3 here and a negative 2 here, it will work out for us to be what we need because um, 5x multiplied by x is 5x squared, 5x multiplied by negative 3 is negative 15x, negative 2 multiplied by x is negative 2, they combine to negative 17x, negative 2 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 6. So solving each of these, we either have 5x subtract 2 equals 0, or we have x subtract 3 equals 0, and we would have that x is 2 fifths, and we would have that x is therefore 3. Our last fact that we use is we know it's positive x squared, it's positive 5x squared, so it's a u-shaped graph. I'm going to put all that information onto our graph. So just a little sketch of the graph here. Um, and let's put in what we know. We know the y-intercept is 0, 6, well, so we'll stick that up here like that. We also know that the x-intercept, well, they're 2 fifths, 0, so 2 fifths, 0, and 3, 0, like that. And it's a u-shaped, 
So we're going to draw the graph coming down here like this. Up we go and back up there. And that's our sketch. Question three. We've been asked to express this quadratic expression in this form here. Basically, that is asking us for part A to complete the square. That's another way of asking us to complete the square. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're, we're trying to complete the square for x squared, subtract 6x plus 11. And how do we do that? Well, we say we put x, put a bracket, we write x, and we put squared. We half the coefficient of the x, so we would put negative 3 here. We would square negative 3 in our head and get 9 and take it away and keep the plus 11. And then we would tidy up to say x take away 3, all squared, add 2. And we can state from that what was our a and our b. Well, our a is, it was plus a, so our a must be negative 3, and our b, by comparison, is positive 2. Okay? Now that's that part done. Let's go on to part b. It then asks us to sketch the equation or the graph given by y equals x squared, subtract 6x plus 11. And it also says, show the coordinates of the turning point. And we know how a complete the square can give us the turning point. It's the negative of this number, the opposite of this number, and that number there. That would be, the turning point here, reading that would be 3, 2. Now, we can just think about how, how to draw this. Let's obviously get our y-intercept. Our y-intercept, well, that's when x is 0. So we can put x is 0 into the original, and we get y is 11. So we know the y-intercept is at 0, 11, and we know the minimum of the graph is at 3, 2. We also know it's u-shaped. We also know it's u-shaped because we've got positive x squared. Now, it doesn't actually turn out to have any roots. And the reason why, we could try and find roots and realise that there are no roots because we can't solve um, this equation equal to 0. Or you could think to yourself, well, if the y-intercept is at 0, 11, like that, and the minimum point is at positive 3, 2, so 3 across, 2 up, here, like that, if that's 3 and that's 2, and it's u-shaped, and that's its minimum, its turning point, you can see that it can never, ever get below the axes. So the only thing it can do is it can go like this, down here, and then back up like that. It doesn't have any roots, place where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so that is our sketch of the graph. We've labelled the turning point as requested, and we've also shown uh, where it intersects the y-axis. Okay, question four. We are given that um, root 3 plus 1 divided by 2 root 3 take away 3 is can be written in this form. Find the values of a and b, and it says a and b are rational. That means that they can be written as fractions or whole numbers. Okay, it just means they're ordinary type numbers, but they want us to state A and B. So let's write the question. So we've got root 3 plus 1, and we're dividing that by 2 root 3 take away 3. Now you should notice to yourself we have some thirds on the bottom, and we want to remove those thirds. And what we would do, let me put brackets around this to remind us that everything on the top can be written in the bracket and everything on the bottom can be. We will multiply the bottom using difference of two squares by 2 root 3 plus 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we must also do to the top, so we also would multiply that by 2 root 3 plus 3. And that's called rationalising your thirds. Okay, so let's multiply out the top bit by bit. So I'm going to multiply everything by root 3. So root 3 that multiplied by this, and then root 3 multiplied by this. So we get 2 root 3 multiplied by 3 would end up just being 2 times 3, which is 6. Root 3 multiplied by 3 is plus 3 root 3. And then we would, obviously, get the plus 1, and we would multiply that by the first item there and the second item there and we get plus 2 root 3 plus 3. Okay, and all of this would be divided by these two things multiplied. 
which is basically 2 root 3 squared take away 3 squared using the difference of 2 squares. So let's tidy that up. What have we got on the numerator? Well, we've got a 6 plus 3. We've also got a 3 root 3 plus 2 root 3. So what, what we've got ourselves on the top is we've got ourselves 9 plus 5 root 3 divided by, well, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3 is 4 times 3, which is 12, and take away 3 squared, which is 9. So we have 9 plus 5 root 3 over 3, and obviously what you can do then is you can just say, um, you can take this separately, and you could do 9 divided by 3, and you could do the 5 divided by 3. You can write it like this. So that's 9 over 3 plus 5 over 3 root 3. And 9 over 3 is 3. So we can write that as 3 plus 5 over 3 root 3. And what's our a? Well, our a is the bit on its own, 3. And what's our b? What's the coefficient of root 3? Well, it's positive 5 over 3. So b is 5 over 3. And we're done. Question 5. We are given a quadratic equation equal to 0 and the coefficient of x squared is 1. So a is 1. We have that b is equal to some unknown number k and c is equal to 16. We are told that the quadratic equation has equal roots. And you know when it says it has equal roots, we know that equal roots means Something about the discriminant, well, it means b squared take away 4ac is equal to 0. So let's substitute that in. That would be k squared take away 4 bracket 1 bracket 16 equals 0. So that would be k squared take away 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 16 is 64 equals 0. So k squared equals 64. So k, taking square roots of both sides, is the positive or negative square root of 64. So either k is 8 or k is negative 8. Do not forget to take positive and negative values when you take a square root. But it asked us to find the, the values, and that should have given us a hint of the constant k. Well, the values of k are x, k is equal to 8 and k is negative 8. OK, last question. We are asked to solve 2 divided by y plus 1. Plus 1 equals 2y. So find y, we're asked. So this is causing us a problem here. The y plus 1 on the denominator of this part of the question. So to get rid of this, we'll multiply everything we see, both sides, by y plus 1. This whole fraction, multiplied by y plus 1, just ends up uh, getting rid of the denominator for us, and we'll just get 2. Then we're going to multiply 1 by y plus 1, so we're going to get y plus 1. And then we're going to have on the other side 2y, but that's going to be multiplied by y plus 1. Now let's collect like terms and expand brackets. So that 2 there goes with that plus 1, and we've obviously got a y left over here. So on this side we're going to have y add 3 equals 2y multiplied by y is 2y squared, 2y multiplied by 1 is plus 2y. Now, this is a quadratic in y's because we've got a y squared. We can only solve a quadratic when it equals 0. So we're going to subtract the y of both sides and subtract the 3. And that would subtract the y here and subtract the 3 here. And we'd be solving 0 is 2y squared, add a y, subtract 3. It's a quadratic equals 0. We'll try and factorise if we can. 0 equals a 2y here, a y here. And what will work out for us? Well, it looks like a plus 1 here. Um, that won't work out for us. It looks like a negative 1 there, actually. So a negative 1 here. So a negative 1 there and a plus 3 here will work out. So we solve in 2y add 3 equals 0, or y take away 1 equals 0. So solving this, take away 3 off both sides, divide by 2 y is negative 3 over 2, or add 1 to both sides, y is 1. That's one answer, that's the other answer, and we're done.
So I hope you found that useful in your revision um, and your preparation for um, Core 1. Thanks very much for watching.